Greetings from Bulgaria. In this video, we are going to cover the strategy design pattern. This is part from our course about design patterns in automated testing. I say in automated testing because we are looking into original design patterns that are used in regular programming and how we can apply them in our context of automated testing, sometimes a little bit changing how they work. So, in the first module out of this course, we looked into how the proxy and the adapter can help us to improve the interface of iWeb driver and iWeb elements. We added new functionalities to them and we improved the maintainability of our tests. Then we covered the decorator design pattern that added extensibility to our mini test framework. Then we discussed the singleton that helps the API usability or how we use a particular functionality such as factory repositories, page objects and others. We covered dependency injection um, that can add a lot of flexibility to our mini test framework using uh, inversion of control containers like Unity. We discussed the chain of responsibility design pattern that uh, help us to build um, a advanced troubleshooting uh, functionality to our mini test library. And now we are going to cover the strategy design pattern uh, that will help us to define um, different algorithms that can help us to extend further our um, project, adding flexibility to add new locators, how we locate the elements or how we wait for them. Um, and uh, also in the links below, you are going to find um, a link to the GitHub repo so that you can clone um, all the examples and you can play them along with the video and uh, test it later. Uh, also, you are going to find many resources uh, that you can use, like articles, etc. If the pace is too fast or too slow, you can, um, you know, um, slow or increase the speed of the video. And also, you will find jump links uh, if you want to watch just a particular part of the video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. Hit the ring bell so that you get notified when new videos are published to the Landa Test YouTube channel, many awesome videos about best practices are published each week. Also check the Landa Test blog where you're going to find many advanced articles about the uh, best practices uh, in automated testing. And now let's get started. First we are going to define uh, the problem really quickly since I'm going to try these modules to be independent from each other. Uh, I'm going to give you a quick refresh of uh, our project, what we are automating and um, what we have until now. If you are curious, you can uh, check the previous videos, especially the one about the adapter design pattern um, and uh, you're going to find it on uh, the Lambda Test YouTube channel. Also, um, I'm not going to write uh, all of the tests that we are going to refactor from scratch. We did that. Uh, in the first module about the adapter, but now we are going to extend and refactor this solution when we discuss the strategy design pattern. Uh, so let's get started. Um, first, I'm going to give you a quick refresh about uh, our tests. Um, many often during this course, I'm repeating every time that if our um, you know tests or solution project that we have uh, needs to be simplistic, our tests are simple, probably uh, in most of the time you don't need design patterns. Design patterns are for cases where we already have, uh, you know, really complex uh, scenarios, logic, uh, cases, tests, and then we need to apply the design pattern so that we don't uh, be in the position of a nightmare of a maintenance where we just maintain the tests instead of writing new tests. So our first scenario that was a little bit more complex was that we were searching for a product here. Uh, one of the things that we improved with the adapter design pattern was that when we see this particular autocomplete, in particular scenarios, this can be pop up uh, in one second, but in others, when uh, there is a significant load on the website, uh, it can show up uh, for much more seconds. And then we need a smart weight, um, this to, um, to wait for it, otherwise your test will fail. So uh, if you are not familiar with explicit weights or the smart weights in Lambda tests, you can check uh, those videos uh, and you will find them in the description below. So we 
uh, basically using the adapter we improved the iWebDriver interface in a way that you're going to see in a minute where we uh, ha, um, where this logic is hidden right uh, how we wait for the elements so uh, the next thing uh, of our test case is where we can add these um, items to be compared then we search for another item again uh, we write all those tests in a way that uh, we use page objects page object model is a very popular design pattern again there are a lot of resources on the Lambda test book and channel but in short uh, one page object is one class this is the simplistic way how you can write that uh, so in this class we have all of the elements how they are located all of the actions that we can do at defining the so-called DSL or domain specific language main, making our test much more readable because there can be read uh, the code can be read like sentences and uh, in some versions like mine I put I like to put my assertions uh, that we do on the page um, in the page object again if you're going to reuse, uh, reuse uh, those assertion methods uh, and another thing that can uh, increase the maintainability of your test is that if you don't use too many parameters but instead if you use um, model classes those model classes are just simple classes that contain all of the data that a particular method will need um, so uh, as we are going to I'm going to give you this refresh uh, I wrote uh, these functions in a way that for example here we need to verify all of those information we uh, all of this information and we provide the expected results as a model classes um, and the logic works in a way that we can add two but many more products and this will continue to work and we use expat access here to find those particular rows in the table uh, using more advanced expat uh, there is a dedicated very advanced article on the Lambda test book about how to write um, those more advanced uh, expats um, so this is the first use case then we have um, you know uh, we can add uh, our second test is where we add products to the shopping cart uh, clicking add to cart then we click view cart and uh, we can increase the quantity refresh it and we are just verifying the total you can write many more tests here to verify various things but we are just keeping it simple and automating the happy part then we check out again just the happy part filling the uh, the information here um, they find the total we click terms and condition continue that's it and if we check the source code uh, again you, you will find the link uh, to the github repo in the links below uh, this is a, a standard n unit uh, selenium project um, in c sharp uh, we use the latest .NET and uh, like in Java where we use Maven here we use NuGet packages I installed all of the necessary and unit NuGet packages here the latest version we also have the latest version of all necessary Selenium um, NuGet packages the most important one is Selenium WebDriver and if you use uh, version 4.11 and above probably you won't need for example the WebDriver manager and some of the rest uh, since now Selenium WebDriver includes its own Selenium manager responsible for downloading the proper drivers and uh, even it includes um, browser management which means that for example if you don't have Firefox it will download a portable version of Firefox and it will execute the test which is really awesome um, and then uh, we have uh, in this particular solution uh, again our tests are um, inside those uh, end unit test classes that are annotated with this test fixture attribute um, we use the this test init methods annotated with the setup attribute these methods are executed before each test where we initialize start the browser uh, if you want to execute your test in lambda test here is the place where you're going to provide uh, all of the capabilities or later in the version with the adapter you're going to place that in the start factory method uh, after each test we are closing the session so that you have for example in lambda test a separate video about each test 
and then we use the page objects um, to automate the different scenarios. That's everything. Inside the page objects, um, we have a base class where we call the reference to the driver uh, using composition to the driver, web driver weight and actions. And as I said, uh, every page object contains a lot of public properties to the different elements here, um, where we provide the locators. If a change is needed, we can apply it in a single place. And we have all of those action methods and assertions. In the uh, adapter version, we have uh, the actual adapter. We have also adapter interface that specifies how the adapter should look like. We added new functionalities such as the start method where um, we basically initialize um, the driver. We, we can postpone when we start the browser with it. Uh, also, we have advanced, more advanced, improved find component methods where we wait for the element to exist and then we return it. But we return the specialized version called component adapter, which is a wrapper to the uh, iWebDriver interface, again, providing additional functionalities. Here, for example, we have wait for Ajax, waiting for this asynchronous JavaScript um, uh, and all of those additional requests to finish. And uh, this is the actual implementation, the driver adapter class that in a minute we are going to refactor using the strategy design pattern. As I said, in the start method, we are uh, using the web driver manager. Again, if you use the newest versions, you don't need it. But we initialize uh, the drivers here and the magic is happening here in the find component where we first use the explicit weights, the web driver wait to wait for the element to exist. Then we wrap it in the component adapter and we return it. And the component adapter, similarly to what we have to the driver adapter, um, we added new functionality such as now the elements know how they were located. Also for the click, we are waiting for element to be clickable uh, or we improve the type text uh, instead of every time calling uh, clear and send keys, we, we have a single method called type text. This is in short. And now let's review, let's review the strategy design pattern. So for the strategy, um, this design pattern, it enables an algorithm's behavior to be selected at the wrong time. As you'll see in a minute, we'll be able to define different find strategies because right now we use the native way uh, where we use this uh, static class by uh, with the predefined Selenium native locators. And in a similar way, in other frameworks like Playwright, um, they're not built really in a way that uh, you can easily add different locators. But instead, I'm going to show you how we can use the strategy design pattern to simplify that. So uh, here, uh, our algor algorithm can be, for example, finding the elements or how we weight them, or even you can use a strategy for um, let's say uh, the shopping cart that I showed you here, uh, we can define different strategies for the different workflows here. That's completely fine. We can, we can refactor our test to use strategies for that. Um, this design pattern is one of the simplest uh, that we are going to discuss dur during this course, because basically we have an interface or an abstract class uh, that it's base for all of the concrete implementations of the algorithm, it's called strategy. Um, as you can see here, we have a method run algorithm. This is just uh, for a placeholder. In our cases, this can be named differently. Uh, in one case, this can be a find element or in others can be weight. Um, and then we have the concrete strategies, the implementation of the strategy itself. But the users or the context of this strategy, it always reference the strategy as the base class or the interface so that we can change the algorithm later, providing and simplifying the concrete strategy as, as you are going to see in a minute. Um, so let's see how we can refactor uh, our current solution. As I said, here the drawback uh, of our current implementation is that we are limited to how uh, to the, this static by locator. If we click here, go to implementation, um, let's see whether we'll be able to see that. 
uh, go to implementation. It's actually in the Selenium. Yeah, all right. So, uh, hmm. anyhow, uh, if we open it, you, you're going to see. Yeah, here it is. Sorry. Uh, if if you uh, if we look here, you will notice that this is uh, this contains a lot of static methods. This by ID, by expat, etc. It will be extremely hard for you to add new locators such as. ID containing, ID ends with, or link contains, etc. Or even in some projects we add such locators like finding something by label. Or you can in 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 the modern uh, web frameworks such as React or Angular, uh, you will need additional uh, locators for React or Angular specific attributes, right? So uh, we can use the strategy to define. A easier way in your mini test library like ours. Um, so let's see how we can do that. Uh, I'm going to create a new folder here uh, called locators. Now after that, we need to define, uh, if we return to our diagram, we need to define this uh, base class for all of the different strategies. In our case, um, I'm going to name this class uh, find strategy, right? And this find strategy, let's just uh, copy the namespace. Here we are going to change that, we don't need these usings. And I'm going to make this public abstract so that um, next we need a property that can be a string property that can be named value. This will hold the actual value of the locator itself, for example, the actual expat or the actual ID or the actual part of the ID. And then we'll have um, a method that we will need to define in the concrete strategies uh, it will this is why I'm going to mark it as abstract and this method will return the actual by locator converted this will be the native by however every strategy will have its own way in this convert method this convert method will be responsible for for example if you have ID containing inside of the convert will we can use specific CSS or XPath for doing that. And uh, after that, of course, we need uh, a base constructor of this class, like here. This is why I'm making it protected. And uh, let's now create the first simple strategy for that. Uh, I'm going to name this um, ID find strategy. Here I'm going to change the namespace again. I'm going to clear that. I'm going to make this public. And of course, we are going to derive from our base class, if you remember the diagram, and we are going to implement the abstract class. And we will need a constructor like this. Visual Studio is generating those for us when you click uh, Alt Enter and it gives you those suggestions. Basically, it did it for us. So here, since this is just the base strategy, that it's, it will be the same like we do uh, in the regular web driver, we are going just to return by uh, ID, and here we are going to provide the actual value part of the base class. For now, we haven't added anything. We just <laughs> made something simpler, a little bit more complex, but in a minute, you're going to see the actual strength of the pattern. Now, I'm going to copy paste it like that. I'm going just to rename it to expat find strategy. Again, here we will define strategies for all of the standard, standard um, locators part of the Selenium like expat, CSS, tag, link, inner text, etc. I'm not going to do that uh, in order to make this shorter. 
Uh, but now let's see what we can do if we want to create, for example, uh, a new locator called ID containing. Uh, containing find strategy. So in order not to, you know, just watch me how I type code, um, I'm making this more quick. Uh, so I'm going to rename that to ID containing find strategy. Now, how how we are going to implement that? Uh, of course, the, we, we need to change that. Um, in in cases where uh, I can choose between XPath and CSS, usually I pick CSS selector because it's um, a, a little bit faster than the XPath. So in this case, we can use CSS selector. So I'm going to use string interpolation. String interpolation is another way in C Sharp that we can easily format strings, but you can use just uh, you know regular string format. And here we are going to generate a unique CSS selector, ID star equal, and then we use single quotes. And then in the string interpolation, when you use curly brackets, this will be changed later with actual. Um, this is like a placeholder that will be exchanged with the actual value part of the value property. And this will build every time a unique CSS selector for ID containing when we call the convert method. Excellent. And uh, let's see one more example, for example, uh, for um, link, link, um, it can be inner text contains, that's fine, right? inner text uh, contains contains find strategy. Please note that every time uh, when I use patterns, uh, I use the suffix strategy. Um, and the names of the pattern, they use like a shared vocabulary for us uh, between programmers and when they see strategy, they already know what is the logic behind it. They know that when you use the proper word uh, and name strategy, they know that this is interchangeable algorithm and know how this works. This is why design patterns beyond um, their high value in uh, reusing algorithms and logic can be used as a shared vocabulary for for you easily to orient in uh, someone else's code, which is excellent. So here, um, instead of using CSS, this time I can use XPath, again using string interpolation. Uh, let's delete that. And uh, I'm going to start the XPath locator with two slashes, then I can use star, which means any element. Then we can use XPath methods like contains, uh, I'm providing brackets since this is a method. Then we use another method called text. Then comma, another uh, parameter. In this case, this is the actual value. In expat, we use many of them single quotes. Um, and then we are going to provide the placeholder for the value attribute like this. Again, you can repeat that for as many strategies as you want. Uh, now we will need um, to build, uh, of course, you, you can directly implement that directly in the adapter, but we're going probably, um, we will need a logic, uh, like uh, some of the methods, to be used inside the driver adapter, but also in the component adapter, since here we have also find component methods, right? And as part of the iDriver interface now, if we are going to use the strategy, we want instead of providing here the regular by uh, native by class of WebDriver, now I'm going to comment that, and I will want to have additional methods like that. Uh, in a minute, we are going to create similar strategy for the weight. I don't have it now, but we will have separate find methods for the different strategies. Uh, at the end of the video, I'm going to show you how if we build additional strategies beyond those declared here, I'm going to show you two ways using extension methods and 
another way using partial classes how we can add additional such methods here. Uh, of course, you can have just a method like this where every time we need to provide the fine strategy. Uh, but again, um, this is, you know, my least preferred way because every time you need to, you know, type new, find strategy, something which is too verbose, uh, in my opinion, yeah, if you need to type it. Um, and this is easier uh, when you use autocomplete uh, to find properly, uh, you're going to type it just a little bit faster than uh, typing find, then bracket, then by, then dot, then bracket, then something. Not bracket, but dot a particular method, right? Uh, this is why uh, we are going now to change how this iDriver uh, works. Uh, we will need again click out enter, then click implement interface, or you can click directly on this bubble. And now we have all of these placeholders with not implemented where we will need to implement those methods. But instead of repeating the code since we can search in the browser itself, but also remember that you have find methods here and I don't want to repeat the logic with the find locators. This is why I'm going to create a, another special class called, uh, for example, we can name it like component find service. This is a class that will find components, right? Uh, let's copy the namespace and the way this works is that we are going to have um, two private variables. Uh, this can be internal but also it can be public, it will be up to you. Um, here I defined um, a private variable to the search context. Why I have here search context instead of iOS driver? because uh, iWebDriver and the iWeb element, both interfaces, they implement this iSearch context because you can search inside the browser but also inside the element itself. This is the iSearch context. And um, so, uh, I implemented these two uh, methods. In a minute, I'm going to show you how this works here with the weight when we define um, the weight strategies uh, but yeah here we define two methods one of them will return the native iweb element uh, it will return the native iweb element and it accepts the base class for all strategies so that we can provide any of the concrete implementations here right and the same for find all and we are going to use this component find service inside the adapter uh, for the driver and inside the adapter for the component itself. So let's see where we can add those. Uh, we will need to add a private variable uh, to this service here at the top and we are going to initialize it inside um, the start method at the bottom. So we have it here and next um, I'm going to comment these two because we are not going to use them anymore but we are going to use the new uh, specific find methods, right? And we will need two maybe private methods it will be up to you whether they, they will be private or not um, Actually we are going to implement uh, these two here find and find all let me show you how they work. Uh, instead of typing the code, let's do it like that. So uh, here, this find method, um, if sometimes uh, we, we are not using extension methods or partial classes that we are going to discuss, if you want to use your custom find strategy that it's not part of this mini test library, you can provide it here and this will start to work. You cannot do that with the buy because with the buy you have just static methods that you cannot add more, right? But with the find strategies that's completely fine. We are changing the, the way, the algorithm, how we find 
different elements. So we call our internal component find service. We call our find here inside. It will use this convert method to return the native by. And then we wrap it inside the component adapter. And here inside the, our uh, component find service, we are going for the element uh, to exist. Now, um, if we need now to define, for example, how this uh, find by ID works, let me show you. We can directly write it like that. Find, this will call uh, the other global public find where we can use it like that, but why? We can just use find by ID, which is simplifying the, um, the, the way this works, right? And for the expat, similarly, we can call return, find, new expat, find strategy expat, that's it. And you can complete and implement the rest of them. It's, uh, it works similarly. Uh, now, instead of typing everything, um, let's quickly show you uh, how we can achieve the same, but uh, for the weights. For the weights, we can uh, define a new folder, uh, weights. And inside these weights, we can define another abstract class called uh, weight strategy. In this weight strategy, again, we can just get the namespace. Um, it's up to you. you. Usually I make them public so that you can use them later inside other projects. And here I'm going to define a protected constructor and two public properties to be able to change the timeout of the web driver weight and the sleep interval. Then we are going to define one abstract method that every weight strategy needs to implement. This will be the abstract weight and two where we need to provide the actual search context, the iWebDriver and the buy. And then we'll have a few protected helper methods that we can use in our concrete weight strategies. Like wait until that accepts um, a delegate or a function or a Lambda function, it will, it's up to you. Uh, we can actually uh, make this more maintainable um, initializing it once in the constructor, but it's up to you. Uh, and then uh, we have another helper function here for find element. And uh, if we need now to create, for example, to be clickable uh, weight strategy, we can create another class similar to the find strategies. We need to get here again the namespace and Similarly to what we did, we, we are making this public. It derives now from weight strategy, which is the base class. We click out enter, implement the abstract class, and we will need first, of course, the constructor that basically provides the same parameters and calls the base constructor of the base class, and then we we'll have one helper private method here um, called element is clickable. We'll provide that to uh, one of the helper functions part of the base class like that. Again, here it's not important how this internally works. Um, in short, I'm going to explain it. We have anonymous lambda function here that we first find the element using the protected um, find element method part of the weight strategy base class and we check whether the element is null um, and whether it's enabled and we are turning true if it's clickable that's it um, we can do that and uh, i'm going to show you the same how this works for uh, to exist strategy to be visible etc as part of folder three uh, you can find the rest of the strategies here that I defined. For example, we have similarly another uh, way strategy for we implement it the same way. We have the concrete weight strategy. It derives again from the base class. We call again the base constructor providing uh, the different 
timeouts and sleep intervals and just the internal function here is different where we check that the elements is not known but for example to be visible strategy it works the same way but instead of checking the enabled property we are checking whether it's displayed or not and um, if we look into the adapter uh, we can search for the wait method here and we have the as you can see here we are providing the actual component the actual wait strategy we call the wait until providing the drivers and the component by and this will wait for us the way this uh, the way we use that is as follows here we'll call driver um, let's see where we have that um, okay we have the driver so we'll, we'll call here driver dot wait then we'll provide the view card and then we need to provide the actual strategy so one way to do that is if you type new to be clickable wait strategy but the same way instead of to be clickable we can provide to be visible right or if you have another one you can provide a new one it's up to you for what you wait you can wait even for another element to appear or we you can wait for i don't know for all of the ajax requests or for for all react requests it will be up to you what you wait for um, however instead of using this syntax with the new i implemented another um, another class called wait where we have this static to property and it's implementing another syntax for the same uh, this is called this is a simplistic factory factory class where we basically the factory class as we will discuss in the next module is responsible for creating stuff for us in this case this will be uh, this waste strategy factory that creates, initializes and is reusing how we initialize uh, all of those strategies instead of using the new way, uh, the new keyword. And in our case, this simplifies how we use it instead of using the new syntax, but it will be up to you. Um, and now, if we want to add additional, um, if we create in another class that there are that it's referencing our core project if we now want to create um, another locator like id containing fight strategy one way to uh, add this to the driver adapter will be to use extension methods um, and these extension methods how they work is basically we wrap them in a static class in this case this is called driver adapter extensions then we have a static method and we need to specify first as a first parameter what we are extending in in this case we are using the this keyword uh, this will be the interface of the driver adapter the iDriver and when you add a using to this particular class here why right here I can add the using to my extension methods using extensibility demos from now on I will have find by um, how was the name that create okay it's just another name uh, but yeah, if we go to the card page, I will now have um, create. Oops, not here. Sorry. Um, we will have it here. Driver create by ID containing. This is one way how you can add that. It it will be like this is really part of the actual interface. This is excellent. Another way how you can add such an extensibility is if you make your component adapter driver adapter a partial class and this opens uh, this particular class 
If you create a similar partial class in your referencing project, you can add additional methods to it. Uh, that's another way how you can build that. It's excellent. So, we covered the strategy design pattern. I think this is a really excellent way for extending the libraries. We refactored uh, our solution. We, you saw a few ways how we can add uh, a new methods, new find strategies or wait strategies. Uh, again, many times this is necessary uh, in uh, more complex scenarios where you need to automate React, Angular, or find something by a custom label, right? Um, so we saw how we can use the uh, strategy design pattern for that. Uh, we use it extensively in our enterprise project as well and the frameworks that we develop. It's an excellent um, design pattern and it goes beyond, uh, you know, this extensibility of the test framework. As, as I said, you can use it as well in your automated tests in page objects to define different workflows like in the case with the Lambda test playground. In the next video, in the next module, we are going to cover the repository and factory design patterns. They are used many often together. This is why I combine them in a single module. You already saw a few examples of the factories. Um, so the factories, we use them in short for initializing test data uh, or creating classes and initializing them. And we use the repositories for uh, wrapping the logic for making requests or calls to the database. Um, and we are going to use those for creating test data. And this is really important things to know for the proper test data management uh, of your automated tests. So check it out later. Thank you for watching. Um, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Uh, I will be really happy to hear uh, for uh, what design pattern you want to hear next. Check the Lambda test blog for many uh, other detailed articles about best practices. And don't forget to get your free uh, certification about Selenium, JUnit, NUnit, and many other technologies on the Lambda test, part of the Lambda test certification program. Thank you and see you in the other modules.